Hello, viewers, and uh, welcome to yet another episode of Dynamic CIO Talk Show. Uh, this is a platform where we invite technology leaders from all walks of life, be it the consumers, the producers, or the influencers of technology, to talk about the present and the future of tech. Uh, now, before I introduce our guest for today's episode, let me take a minute to set up um, for this conversation. Um, the events uh, of the last 15 odd months have helped CIOs in overcoming their reluctance or inhibitions uh, around moving their mission critical workloads and also other uh, customer facing ones uh, from an on-prem uh, to a cloud approach. Uh, the reason was very simple. Uh, every organization irrespective of uh, their size or IT maturity uh, realized that uh, cloud will be the only way to overcome the shortfalls of a quicker, faster, reliable, scalable, and secured uh, tech infrastructure, and subsequently, uh, better and seamless experience to the customers. Uh, that's the reason why end user spending on public cloud services is forecast to grow um, at around 23.1% in 2021 uh, to a total of 332.3 billion uh, as forecasted by Gartner. Uh, it is important we know that the surge in usage and adoption of cloud uh, that came as a shot in the arm for enterprises during the ongoing crisis will further evolve from, uh, from serving stray use cases such as infrastructure and application migration to those that combine cloud with technologies such as artificial intelligence, such as IoT, 5G, and so on. Uh, right. So to discuss this and more about some exciting fresh new announcement and advancement in its cloud cloud portfolio, uh, I have with me today Ross Brown. Ross is the VP Product Management uh, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure at Oracle. Welcome to the show, Ross. Thank you, Rahul. Glad to be here. Thank you for being with us. Um, and just to begin with, uh, you've joined Oracle from VMware. Uh, tell us something about yourself. What's your role in Oracle? What's the strategic initiative and mandate you have uh, you've had uh, since uh, joining the company? Sure, thank you. Um, so I joined the company about 18 months ago and um, part of my uh, reason for coming here was um, I had done some work with Don Johnson and, and the team when I was at VMware about um, putting VMware on OCI, and I started learning about what they were building, and, and sort of the central premise behind OCI was rooted in this notion that if you were building a cloud from the ground up, instead of building it on top of something that already existed, like e-commerce engine at Amazon or the Googleplex that serves up Gmail and YouTube, if you weren't inheriting the constraints of an existing platform but could build it from scratch, how would you build a cloud for every workload? Not just this notion of cloud native, but to make it so that the cloud worked for vertically scaling applications and network latency sensitive applications like scientific computing and just be able to really scale, uh, you know, in, in terms of cloud native horizontal applications scaling really well. And I was really intrigued by that. So it was an opportunity to come. Uh, and the role that I took on was to be the voice of those products and to lead product marketing and how we launch the products in the market and and tell our story to customers. Great. Uh, a very nice and succinct introduction that you've made about yourself. Um, I must I must confess that I was a I was a great skeptic of Oracle Cloud until uh, until the company unveiled the version two, which was uh, announced around three years ago at an open world. Uh, since then, we have seen many improvements uh, that deserve a very serious look um, by uh, the consumers, by the industry, by the analysts, by the journalists, all of them. It's a significant improvement over the previous version. Uh, it's more competitive, has, has won, and it, it has also already won the company several high-profile customers, including Zoom. So mm -hmm. what's been the progress on OCI, in particularly in past 15 months, as the world saw a, a dramatic shift from uh, an office-only environment uh, to a widespread hybrid remote working environment. So in your introduction, when you were talking about the cloud, one of the things that I really resonated with was you talked about customers moving from, you know, moving several workloads or thinking about, you know, selective workloads to really the cloud being a platform for innovation. And I think there's this natural curve that as you build a cloud from scratch and you build it with bare metal and you start thinking through how do you build non-blocking networks and all the things that we built, 
it, you go through this notion of how do you get customers to shift through this notion of do I trust you to is it efficient? Does it really create value for me? To do you have all the services for really rampant innovation? And, and that's kind of the real value of the cloud is it's gone from being a lower cost way of doing things to because my data is there, I have access to cognitive services and machine learning, and I have access to capabilities that I could never really build the capital for myself, right? And, and so for me, I've been um, really interested to see how Oracle is leapt forward, uh, because we you know we're not just trying to play catch up, we're trying in every service we build to reinvent what that service means. So uh, for core compute, instead of building shared infrastructure, you build bare metal as your core structure. Uh, for virtual machines, we, we thought long and hard about how could you make virtual machines better. And one of the ways we did that is by innovating and creating this thing called flex VMs, where instead of having fixed shapes that you're locked into, you can say, I want seven cores with, you know, 16 gigs of memory per core. I want 72, you know, ampere cores or whatnot. That notion of giving the customers complete flexibility over those shapes. So what I've really liked about OCI is how fast it's gone. And the analysts have seen this. If you look at our Gartner scorecard for the past couple of years, we've gone from 38 in their IS scorecard to 62. And we, we've just gone through the work for this year so that will come out in July. And we think we're in the high 70s now and competitive with both. Um, uh, where we believe that based on self-scoring, we're above where Google was last year and on par where, where Azure was last year. So the real story behind OCI is not just that we have a Gen 2 cloud, but that we've moved extremely quickly to not just catch up, but also out innovate in every service that we've built. Um, a little offbeat uh, question. Um, sure. But when, you know, conventionally when when the, when there's a talk of public cloud, uh, the buck stops at the, you know, after, after talking about the top three, which is, uh, uh, you know, AWS, Azure, or, or at best Google cloud. Um, right. I mean, I want you to demystify that there's a, there's a public cloud world uh, beyond these three uh, big tech organizations and how, uh, how Oracle, as you, as you briefly mentioned about, uh, uh, you know, you, you spoke about the Google, oh, sorry, the, the Gartner, uh, scorecard. You also mentioned about um, you know Oracle's distinct approach uh, to to the to the cloud services. So can you demystify this? That how should how should the CIOs, the CTOs, the users think beyond these big tech, the three big tech companies? It's a great question. I, I will point out that at one point, and I'm old, so you have to give me some history here. That at one point the database market was dominated by Cybrace, Informix, and Ashton Tate. And so markets evolve, and we're still in the early days of cloud. So while the cloud competitors that we're competing with are large and have amassed very large portfolios and whatnot, the amount of work that has yet to move to the cloud is massive. I mean, the amount of installed base around enterprise apps, what's mostly in the cloud right now are web scale and mobile scale applications that could only exist because of the cloud, things like Netflix and whatnot. And then you've got significant cloud native applications that have moved over and corporations have built significant workloads there and then cognitive services and machine learning services and things like that but when you look at vertical scaling systems of record the things that run businesses globally their erp instances their manufacturing supply chain measure uh, systems whatnot by and large most of those have not moved to the cloud at all and so there's a significant opportunity and oracle's relationship with our customers is not as a cloud supplier. Our relationship with customers is, is as an application supplier that understands those industries. What we've built with OCI is a general purpose, broad, run everything that IT needs platform. But what we bring is all that industrial knowledge of how all those businesses work and how those core systems work, because we, we run most of them. <laughs> Oh, very well said. I mean, I completely resonate with the fact that Oracle is as has has never historically never been a cloud supplier. It has been an app, app supplier, and you know, uh, OCI is is going to be uh, an augmentation of the efforts. So, uh, Ross, one of the biggest pain points that a consumer or, or a customer um, CIO CTO face in the in, in cloud adoption is, uh, you know, migrating uh, legacy to the cloud. Uh, yeah. the cost and the effort that is involved in, in, in this migration and 
you may call it lift and shift as well, is insane. Um, and and you know most of the journeys actually die or 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 are stopped or halted even before they are taken forward. So right. how does Oracle Cloud infrastructure help in this? Uh, something uh, something that Oracle Cloud Lift uh, is meant for. So let me explain uh, the genesis behind Cloud Lift. So first, explain what Cloud Lift is. We, we consider the migration of workloads and the building of key workloads, whether those are high performance computing solutions or, you know, Oracle based applications or ISV applications or, or cloud native or whatever, that moving those to OCI is, you know, how our sales reps get paid is when you start consuming, not based on the notion that you're going to buy credits or whatnot. So they're motivated not to sell consulting hours. They're motivated to get you consuming the cloud. And so we made our migration services free. We made it part of the tenancy. Now, you could look at that and say, oh my God, you know, that's a massive amount of people and effort that you need to be able to do that. Well, there's a bit of a trick. Uh, part of it is understanding what we've built as a cloud. We did some very different things. We built as our core construct bare metal. We built uh, off box virtualization for our networks so that uh, there's no, you know, network traffic collisions between neighbors. You have pure networks that are non-blocked and open to yourself. It, we, we've done a bunch of things to enable that applications don't need to be refactored to be able to move. You don't have to encapsulate them into microservices and refactor the network IP addresses. We built technologies so you can move privately addressed network structures over to OCI without changing a thing. That you could move physical servers and just pick them up and migrate those physical server images to bare metal servers running in our cloud. And that that takes days. That doesn't take weeks and months. So the trick behind Cloud Lift is it, it, it's not a you're signing up for six months to a year of rewriting an application to move to our cloud. In most cases, you're, you're signing up for a couple of weeks worth of work. So for us, uh, we started realizing, and this is kind of the the, the real selling point of the differences OCI brings, we realized it was taking longer to set up a PO and get the paperwork in order for us to do the migration than it took to do the actual migration. And the second thing, and this is a really important one, is we talked with our partners, you know, our SI partners like Accenture and Deloitte and DXC and, and Cognizant that are very important to us in our business. And we wanted to make sure that by going and making this stuff free, that we weren't creating a problem for them, that they're in this business. And what we learned from most of them is that in those uh, cases where they're being paid by a cloud vendor, like a Google or whatnot is paying them to do the migration. In most of those cases, the margin on that deal is not, you know, greater than a single digit. It's a low single digit number if it's positive at all. It's mostly cost recovery. They do it because it puts them in the position of once we're done with the migration, then we start writing new apps and we start building you know, machine learning enabled applications and analytics and whatnot. And that they make real good money on. That's good marginable money. And so talking with them, we realized that if we could do the migrations faster and get over to that point, and we don't touch any of the customer's budget for the migration, all of that's left intact for the net new applications that by making cloud lift services part of our core tenancy and making migrations free it was not only good for the customer by being on the cloud faster it was good for us it started consumption faster and it was good for partners it got more of the budget available for those high margin value creating activities instead of just lift and shift that's a great explanation of oracle cloud cloud lift um so uh, ross the year 2020 uh, i mean most of it and and even 2021 and especially in india uh, have actually caused bad flutters as far as uh, businesses are concerned uh, on one hand it it caused a lot of a lot of upheavals uh, while on the other uh, it also mandated um, a lot of tech transformation uh, which, right. which, resulted, which resulted into the need for modernizing the tech infrastructure. So my question to you is that how is how is Oracle, uh, you know, suited or or is ready to help in making it easier, faster, and and affordable uh, to innovate uh, and modernize with the OCI? Uh, how can customers protect their investment they have already made in in Oracle technology and still move with the pace of the change? But, you know, it's one of the things that we want to make sure is we've had uh, a position 
of long-term support for our customers. We have customers on our database product that, you know, started on the mainframe with us and then moved to Unix systems and then moved their licenses to client server on Intel and then are now moving their license under a bring your own license program to the cloud. And so we want, in our apps business, we have this things called Apps Unlimited where we've agreed through 2032 to support our core in, you know, in for JD Edwards and supply chain and whatnot products. Um, so this notion of long-term commitment to customers is something that we take seriously. So uh, we have this new program that uh, starts on tomorrow on the 20, uh, 22nd, um, where we wanted to recognize that as customers move workloads to OCI, that they're creating value for us and themselves. And so we, we're introducing a program called Support Rewards. Oracle Support Rewards is a program that in essence, for every dollar of consumption that occurs inside of OCI, we put a reward of 25 cents into an account that when they have their licensing bill for their database license or their Java Enterprise Edition or you know, other products that they've been running on premise that they wanna to bring to the cloud, they can pay for that support bill using those credits. So uh, say a customer has a half a million dollar support bill for database and middleware um, by driving $2 million worth of consumption, which when you look at compute storage networking and all of the network transit costs and all that other stuff is not a lot of cloud computing. That's kind of you know a moderate footprint for cloud computing that completely pays for their support bill. And so by running, you know, not just Oracle workloads, but any workload, uh, you know, cloud native running HPC workloads, whatnot, they'll accrue those credits. The one caveat to it, though, is third party products that are passed through, like when we're reselling somebody else's product, those don't accrue, but all the direct consumption of OCI platforms do. And so we think this gives customers a way uh, an incentive to move to the cloud quicker get value out of the consumption that they have on OCI to help offset the licensing that they have for Oracle technologies and to bring their legacy support bill down to zero as their cloud consumption with us grows. Well, um, you know, that's that's quite an incentive uh, for for the customers to uh, migrate to the cloud and and use it more pervasively uh, than right. more conservatively. Uh, but have you have you calculated the economics of of this? I mean, how enticing it would be to uh, for 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 a customer uh, to uh, you know avail this kind of a reward program and roll for it? Well, one way to think about it is uh, every customer out there is going to consume cloud, right? I mean, the, the migration is there. The question is which cloud? And if I'm an Oracle Technologies customer running our middleware platforms, running Java Enterprise and those sorts of things, and are licensing those products from us, if you decide to run on somebody else's cloud, you can, and we certainly enable the BYOL program to go to anyone else's cloud, but you don't, you still end up paying the support bill to us. So it's an additional cost on top of cloud. If you move those workloads to OCI, the economics of it are because it's a, uh, 25 cents on the dollar, we get $4 in consumption on the cloud for every dollar we're offsetting in license. Well, uh, the reality is that's the credit rate. We think the average rate will be higher than that, that we'll see somewhere around six to $7 of consumption for every dollar in credit that we apply because the reality of applications and how you know a database application moved to the cloud isn't just now the database services, it's also the web front end to it and it's the application logic tiers and it's the storage and that starts being a little bit bigger. So we think it's a really good incentive for customers. It, it lowers their support bill by choosing OCI. It, we think we have a better cloud for our own technology. So we think that makes a lot of sense, but we're really doing this to incent customers to look beyond their Oracle workloads and say, look, OCI is a place you can run all of your IT. You can do the entire data center. And if I look at it that way and say both cloud native and you know, web applications and web scale and mobile scale applications I want to move over. Now the consumption I have on OCI is so high, my tech support bill is now zero. And that's a pretty attractive deal. Wonderful. I mean, uh, we will we will wait and see how it unfolds in the in the coming days once the annou announcement is made and once the customers start availing this uh, facility. Uh, however, I personally think that, um, you know, this would this would be quite an attractive option for for them to uh, you know reach out for. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. 
lastly uh, you know going forward uh, as the businesses globally and especially in india prepare uh, to open and go mainstream uh, they'll be uh, they'll all be in for a for a hy- hybrid form of work and therefore it will require it organizations to tweak the way uh, applications are accessed uh, while also ensuring data security and data governance um, does does uh, today's big announcement um, also kind of uh, you know hint towards easing all of this i mean does it also uh, touch upon some of these aspects of data security and data governance in a nutshell uh, what's what's there for uh, from from oracle to help organizations strengthen their cloud strategy well this is one of the core things to understand about oracle and our approaches we're coming at the public cloud from a perspective of an enterprise class company that thinks about industrial solutions, um, not a startup orientation that thinks about building minimum viable product. And then you then think about securing it. And then you think about, you know, building, you know, capabilities into it. And so we've built our cloud with this notion of maximum security. And so that means a couple of things. One, most of the security features on OCI are free. There's no cost for them. Uh, that's a core value of ours, that if you're going to run an application on our environment, you should have the tooling. That, that would be like being a hotel manager that doesn't have locks on the doors and charges extra for the locks. You know, you're, you're selling a tenancy. You've got to say help secure it. The second thing is we have this set of technologies uh, called security zones. And one of them basically is when you open up a tenancy, you are default position. Everything is turned off you must explicitly grant access. And that's very different than other clouds where everything by default is open and you must close it down and get access to it in different ways. And so the posture that we've had as a company has been make the cloud easier to move to, but then make sure all of the tooling they need to be effective in the cloud, the security tooling, the observability and management tooling, the ability to to monitor performance and manage everything through APIs, that that's all present and part of the base tenancy, the same way we do cloud lift and the migration services, is just a function of what you get for being a tenant. All those security tooling is a function of what every OCI customer just gets by being an OCI customer. Thank you very much, uh, Ross, for talking to, to me and uh, talking to Dynamic CIO ahead of the great announcement. And uh, my best wishes uh, for, for the announcement that is to be made today, later today. And uh, thank you very much for spending time with us. Thank you, Rahul. All the best. I hope you have a great summer. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks, Mike.